Hello and welcome to Wednesday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic and a debut on the channel for a math teacher from near Pittsburgh called Bfrange17 <laughs> and a puzzle called 10 Factorial um, which involves um, the, the basic idea here is that the Fistamafel ring the, no, the product of the digits in this yellow ring, the Fistamafel ring have to be divisible by 10 factorial <laughs> which is an absolutely brilliant idea um yeah this is what we're going to have a go at in the minute in a minute the testers have had a look at this and say it's great so um i'm sure it is um it sounds quite complicated it sounds like we're going to have to put our maths heads on today um but i will do my best to do that for you in a moment or two's time um now a few things to mention uh, let's give a shout out actually for Nicholas and his sister for tweeting a very nice picture of um, our new books arriving. Apparently they love the new books and we love hearing that the books are arriving and that you love the new books. So wonderful picture there and fantastic to see. Um, other than that, Riff Clown tomorrow, the big news of course is that uh, we have a new Patreon reward for you. Start of February. The gallery, the Sudoku gallery, is opening tomorrow at 4 p.m. UK time. So if you are a patron of the channel, and it's only a couple of bucks a month to be a patron of the channel, um, prepare. Um, it, it's coming out then. Riff Clown has done an absolutely stellar job, as you'd always expect from such a brilliant constructor. And uh, yeah, all of these, all of these pictures and paintings will be revealed tomorrow afternoon. Look out for that and do have a go. Um, other than that, the other thing that's going on today um, is that Mark and I are streaming tonight at 10 p.m. UK time. Hexels, Hexels Plus is the edition of Hexels we're on. I hope we might be able to finish Hexels Plus this evening. And if we can, there's another game called hex cells in infinite or infinity or something that we will we will move on to uh, and have a look at that too so um we'd love to have your company if you're free 10 o'clock uk time i'll try and remember to put a link on the screen right now um and the only other thing i need to to do is to wish a couple of people a very happy birthday today and i'm going to start off with matt who i think might be at indiana university I hope I haven't got that wrong. I've extrapolated that from an email address. Um, but Matt discovered us a few months ago and enjoys the channel. And Matt, thank you for telling us that. And I wish you a very, well, a very happy birthday today with, of course, an enormous slice or two of chocolate cake, which hopefully should be made up of mostly icing, of course. Um, and then the other birthday is Patrick. Patrick has turned 27 today. And I know this because your friend Curtis wrote to us and told us that you both enjoy the channel very much. Uh, avid fans, I think was how Curtis put it. That Those are the sorts of fans that we aspire to get. Um, and Patrick, many happy returns. I hope it is a brilliant day with cake, of course. And that's, that's all the news. Let us have a look at 10 factorial um, now, for the for those of you who don't know what 10 factorial is, it is 10 times 9 times 8 times 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. I have no idea what that number actually is. Uh, I do not propose um, to approach the puzzle that way, I can tell you. But that is what 10 factorial is. Um, and these are the rules of the puzzle. Normal Sudoku rules apply. So we have to put the digits 1 to 9 once each in every row, in every column and in every 3x3 three three box. Digits long an arrow must sum to the digit in that arrow's circle. So these three cells here, imagine these were, I don't know, 1, 2, and 4. 1 plus 2 plus 4 equals 7. Oh, 7. So we put, uh, not a good start for my mathematics, uh, 1 plus 2 plus 4 is 7, so that's what we put in the circle. Um, digits along a thermometer must increase from the bulb end. We have got one thermometer today, so let's make that a four this would have to be higher than four could be six this would have to be higher than six could be nine so four six nine is a completely legitimate way to fill a thermometer adjacent digits along a green line must differ in value by at least five so we've only got one green line today so that means if this square here was a one this square here would have to be at least six Manage to type seven have to be at least six because we need a digit that's five away from one so that could be six seven eight or nine and things to think about regarding green lines are 
could this be a six? Well, no, because that would then have to be a one again, and that would be bad. Two digits in the same box won't work for Sudoku. Um, cells separated by a white dot must contain consecutive digits. We have got so we've got one of those. So we've got one of lots of different constraints. We've got one thermometer, one green line, and one white dot. So if this was a two, this square here would either be one or three in order to be... Oh, no, no, I didn't, didn't deserve that. I don't, it doesn't, no way that gets the song. Um, oh, that's thrown me. Um, okay, and then the only other rule is this one about the factorial. So it says the product of the digits in the 16-cell picture frame surrounding the central 3x3 box, sometimes called the Fistimafel ring, so that's this, these yellow squares here, must be divisible by 10 factorial. <laughs> Do have a go. The way to play is to click the link under the video as usual, but now I get to play. Let's get cracking. I don't know if I should prove the Fistimafel theorem first or think about 10 factorial first. Let's let's do the, the, the Fistimafel um Let's do Fistimafel first. So so there is a th I, I mean I talked about this in a recent number file video. Um those of you who follow the channel number file may have seen that if you haven't i'll try and remember to put a link on the screen it was uh, a great thrill uh, to be involved in number file at all but there's a theorem in sudoku uh, which basically proves that these 16 yellow cells here are the exact same 16 digits that you will find in the corners of a sudoku puzzle and that's pretty incredible isn't it but it is true and you can prove it very easily and the way to prove it is to highlight, um, let's do that. Oh, there's a slightly different shade of yellow. Uh, let's try and yellowify it properly. Highlight those cells and think about what they contain. Now, of course, we don't know exactly what the disposal of the digits is within this yellow area, but we do know that the yellow area must contain four sets of the digits one to nine, because this is a complete row, this is a complete row, this is a complete box and this is a complete box and each one of those individual units has to have the digits one to nine in them once each so yellow overall is four sets of the digits one to nine now what would happen then if i highlighted columns one two eight and nine in green now what could we describe the green cells as well the green cells are four complete columns of the sudoku so that the green cells are also four sets of the digits one to nine so at the moment, these two sets of things are the same. They contain exactly the same digits, four sets of the digits, one to nine. But the interesting thing to think about is what would happen if you now remove this digit, say, make that, that, that purple cell. If you remove that purple cell from the green set and the yellow set, you can see it's in green and yellow at the moment, isn't it? It forms part of the green set. It forms part of the yellow set. So imagine we removed it from the yellow and the green set like that what could we now say about the yellow and the green set well we know the yellow set contains 35 digits only now 35 cells and we don't know exactly what 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 it contains anymore because we don't know what this digit is but but we do know that the green set must have in it exactly the same because the green set it was four sets of the digits one to nine and we removed that cell's contents from from green and the yellow set was four sets of the digits one to nine and we removed that cell's contents from yellow so if you remove the same thing from something that was the same those two things must remain equivalent mustn't they and we can do that for any any cell that is in both sets and if we do that boom we suddenly discover that these two by twos in the corner, the digits in those cells must be identical to this ring in the, in the middle of the puzzle. And that's going to be true for any Sudoku. Um, and uh, you can prove it. You can go and find the simple Sudoku, fill it in and then cross off the digits and you will find it is true. Now, what does that mean for this puzzle? Well, I don't know yet, but um, and it will be ironic if this is not relevant. But I imagine it must be. I mean, if we're told the Fistimafel ring has to be divisible by some number, some astronomically large number, then I'm sure we're going to have to think about the fact that this, the contents of this ring also appear in the two by twos in the corner. But maybe, maybe what we should do 
now is just consider the nature of 10 factorial. Um, and when I say the nature of it, what I want to do is to reduce it to its simplest terms so that I can understand. But I mean, there are some things that are, are trivially obvious to me. Like, I think there has to be a 7 in, in, in the ring. And that is because if we think about, um, let's try and do this, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I can't put 10 in, uh, it won't let me put a double digit number. I'll try and do it, um, I'll try and do it like this. Uh, does that look like a 10? Sort of. So I've missed out one because one times a number is, is not interesting, it's the same number. So this is, if we were to multiply, put up, oh, I can do this. Hang on, hang on, hang on. I can do this. Look, I can put, I can put, I can sort of cheat and put an X between. Um, so that is 10 factorial. Um, but, and, and seven is prime. So there's no way we can reduce, um, we, we can reduce seven down to any more of its elements. I always think of numbers as having um, elements that make them up being their prime factors. So the prime factors of the number seven are the number seven. Uh, it's just the number seven. So we can't reduce this any further. This is in effect an element. Um, just as two, we can't reduce it any further. Three, we can't reduce any further its prime. Four, we can reduce because four is two times two. So we could replace four with, with that. Five, we can't reduce. Six, we can reduce again. Six is two times three. So again, I've reduced it. I've reduced the six into its elements. Seven can't be reduced. Eight can be reduced. Eight, eight could be two times two times two. Nine can be three times three. And 10 is two times five. So this is another way of representing 10 factorial in terms of the actual elements of the numbers. And you can see that seven it sits here alone. It has no, um, there's nothing we can do with the number, the number seven to reduce it. So if we didn't put an actual seven in the ring, let's put an actual seven in, what would we have to put in in order to make sure that this ring was divisible by this number? Well, the answer is going to be a multiple of seven. Like if we could put 14 in the ring, that would be fine because 14 has as its elements, its constituent parts, two and seven. So we could achieve, if in effect, um, we, could, we could be attempting to make this divisible by this massive number if we included a 14 in the ring, but we can't include 14 in the ring because it's a double digit number. So, so, so seven must appear in this ring. And now we've discovered because we've sort of we've broken it down, that there must actually be two fives in the ring as well. And again, the reason for that is you could, we could put a multiple of five in uh, and achieve the same thing, but obviously a multiple of five is not gonna work because we can't put 10 or any higher number into a Sudoku cell. So the ring now is going to have two fives and a seven, definitely, and then a whole load of other numbers that are far, far from clear to me. Because for example, if there was a six in the rings, put a six there, that would cater for, we could knock out these two, we'd effectively have dealt with that. Mm, that's good, this is gonna be difficult actually. can't really see how to even start it because there's too much flexibility. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There's eight twos. So we just have to make sure that whatever numbers we put in, in the ring include at least eight twos as their prime factors. One, two, four threes. But that doesn't mean that we have to have, you know, four threes around around the ring. Because again, a number like, well, a number like nine, what would happen if you put nine in the ring? 
that deals with two of the threes effectively because nine obviously is three times three so in terms of dealing with the elements of the number we're, we're doing a good job by putting nine into the ring i mean we can't put many nines into the ring because we've got too many arrow cells hmm Okay, so maybe actually I've got that's what I've got to do. Now I was wondering about seven, whether I could force a seven, because uh, seven can't go on a three cell arrow. That's actually a four cell arrow. I mean that's a four cell arrow, but it's it's less constrained than this one. Ah. Ah, right. Ah, okay, I've got something here. Right, I'm going to shift this two. This two came out of my factorization of eight. Um, so I, I, I was noting that eight is two times two times two. I'm going to shift that two to there because I want to free it up off this arrow. Because this arrow is interesting, actually, if I combine it with that arrow. So these are these are all the prime factors we've got to achieve at the top. This is not Sudoku. OK, so everything I've got in the top two rows is nothing to do with Sudoku. But now I'm going to talk a bit about Sudoku. These these five digits here all have to be different, don't they? And the minimum they could be would be one, two, three, four and five, which is 15 triangular number for five. Now, the minimum these could be would be then double one, which means the absolute bare minimum I can make all of those arrow cells add up to is 17. But what's the maximum I could make those two circles add up to? Well, it's going to be an 8-9 pair, 17. So this is an 8-9 pair. We're actually getting digits here. We get two one, two ones here. This is a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 quintuple. These are not ones. Don't use these digits as Sudoku. That will not work. Um, I don't know if I can do more than that. There's no one on the... This square is at least four now. Because these two squares can't be ones individually. This arrow... Oh, this is seven. Right, okay. Look at this arrow. These three squares are at least one, two... Whoa, 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 whoa. They're at least one, two, three, adding up to six. This is at least a one. That means that this is at least a seven. But it can't be eight or nine, so it is seven. So that's one. This isn't one. This is a one, two, three triple looking at this square. So this is now four or five. This is not one. One in the, one in the quintuple has to go here. And all of a sudden, we're actually getting a load of the ring filled in. So what we're going to do in a minute is tick these, di tick these elements off against the digits we're putting in the, in the circle. I like this. Is it, oh, that's not one. By Sudoku. So that's, that's the one on the on this strat so now now ah this is very interesting no jokes thank you about my soporific effect <laughs> um no this is very interesting to me because i've now put four ones into the fistemafel ring now one thing we can say about one is it's not the product of the yellow of the yellow ring is not being adjusted much is it by the fact the fact there are four ones in it So, hmm, that can't be a five. Oh, this can't be a, a five or a four, actually, because if it was five or four, these two digits would add up to nine. And once we added the one, we'd get ten, and that can't be ten. So that digit is a little bit restricted. keep seeing these digits up here um, right so so we right here's something interesting we know that there is definitely a five on the ring in row three because one of these is part of the one two three four five quintuple but we know from our prime factorization that there are two fives in the ring overall. So there is a second five, which is either here, 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 not there, not, not on the whisper. Oh, maybe we've got to think about this. 
Right. I, I mean, I just mention it because I'm thinking about fives, but a five can never live on a German whispers line because the net, the adjacent digit has to be at least five different from five. And if we go up, we get to 10. If we go down, we get to zero. And anything greater, obviously, is um, going to lead to negative numbers or even higher double digit numbers. They will not work. So that's definitely not five. So the other five is either... And there could only be one other. Uh, no, they, no, that's not true, is it? No, there can be more. Because all we need is this to be um, basically factorized exactly by this. So if, if we achieved a perfect distribution of sort of atoms, if you like, or elements within this, and then had an extra five, then, this, then the, the ring would just be five times the multiple of this which is still obviously then divisible by it so that's it doesn't matter if we exceed these constituent elements at all it just matters that we have sufficient elements within the ring that we can tick off every single one of these digits There's no five here. So the five is in one of those, the, the second five. Well, the second five that there must be, there could be three fives, there could even be four fives. But the second five that there must be is in one of those five cells. That doesn't feel very useful, actually. This digit is at least a four, isn't it? Because these have to be at least two. So that's four, five, or six because it can't it can't be higher than seven, eight, or nine. Um, does it have no? No, it doesn't. Uh, right, bobbins, 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 bobbins. Okay. Um, Can we work out at this point effectively how much of this this these fact these elements we've used? Because we've got one. I mean, the two and the three on the ring here effectively deal with these two, don't they? And then we've got two, three, four, and five. Yes. <laughs> okay. So one way of viewing the ring at the moment is that we've got six factorial already on it. That's lovely. Um, so what I'm thinking here is the two and the three here cancel these two, which were two times three. There's definitely a four in that string. So that cancels this double two here. That's the four factorial part of it. Five, we know there's a five in one of those. And then the, the there's a second two and three on here that are different from this two and three. And two times three is six. So that deals with this two and three. So actually all of this is dealt with already let's cut we can delete those they are not oh we better delete the x's as well actually so the rest of the the rest of the ring and there's not that much left of it two three there's six more cells that have to deal with seven factorial eight factorial which is actually two times two times two nine factorial which is double three and two and five for 10 factorial. But the tricky thing with that is that's not actually, that feels like it might be quite constrained, but it's not really, is it? I mean, if I just, if I just lump a nine in there, I deal with that one straight away. If I deal in it, put an eight in there, I've dealt with most of it then. And then I just have to put a seven, I could put a seven here. Oh, the other, the other thought, is you could put a six you could start mixing them up you could put a six in here and that would deal with a two and a three and you could put another six there or there and that would deal with another two or three a seven a five and then a four maybe would do it hmm okay Am I being am I being slow there? Is there some sort of additional 
way of thinking about this. Oh, all right, let, let's, okay, I'm gonna move this over because I've just thought of something about the green two by twos. Um, so let's move this over, seven, two, 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 three, three, and then this is two, five. Oh, someone's coming in my door. Um, so let's delete this now. There we go. Um, now, what have we got now? We've got, well, what I was going to say is we've got four ones here. Now, by the Fistemafel theorem, these have to live in the corners, don't they? In the two by two boxes. Ah, and that can't be a one because that's in a circle. One of these is a one. Again, we can't put one in a circle. One of these is a one, but not necessarily on the whisper. So we don't know. At least I don't think we know. We've got a lot of low digits on, on the ring already, which have to be allocated around, but that's, uh, that's not very surprising because we've got a lot of arrow cells that presumably are going to take low digits. That digit is high though, isn't it? Because that's summing three different, well, not necessarily low numbers, but it, it's the minimum three numbers could add up to in Sudoku if they're different is a one, two, three, triple, which would give us um, six here. Again, these digits, let's, let's blacken them or something just to make us absolutely sure. These are not Sudoku digits. These are my factors I'm trying to remember. Um, okay, so that's that's at least six as well, actually. Oh, but the, well, that, that's very true, but it's total and, totally and utterly useless because it's not in the ring. So that digit doesn't have to go in the yellow. Ah, okay, but maybe we have to... These are all high, aren't they? Because we've got the one, two, three, four, five quintuple. So is Sudoku going to be our friend? What a ridiculous notion that is. And Bfrange 17, I can't believe you're making me do Sudoku so early in your, so early in your puzzle. Um, I, keep, I keep wanting to use these. This is not helping me. Maybe I could just remember. I've got, I've got to deal with... I've basically got to deal with seven, eight, nine, and 10 factorial at this point. I think I can remember it. Seven, eight, nine, and 10 factorial. Right, I'm gonna get rid of that and, and try and not let that distract me. Ah, okay, well two and three have to be in here as well by Sudoku. So this could be a six arrow. And the only way it's not a six arrow is if this is one, two, or three, which it could be. Um, um, I don't know what to do, sorry. Uh, <laughs> um, I don't know, maybe I'm meant to think about These digits have to be quite low, don't they? Because that can't be that high. So these digits are two, three, four. They can't be five, actually. If you put five into either of these, you'd need a one in the other position, and one is not an available digit by Sudoku. Okay, so these are two. Ah, there must be a two on one of these. Oh, that would be quite good because that would tick off part of my ten fa my, my the ten factorial part of the equation, wouldn't it? Yeah, I mean, if this... Oh, no, I'm wrong. That could be double three. Ah, bobbins. I was, I was, what I was going to say is that if you had to have a two on here, that would have been useful. Uh, because, but then I was viewing those as a three, four pair. And, and they obviously, three plus four would add up to too many. But, why well, that could be double three, probably. I would knock a three into this. No, that doesn't work. Oh, okay, right. That's not double three. Yeah, 
Yeah, that's quite that's weird. Um, if that's double three, because that has to be a three and that has to be a three, because we need a three in our quintuple up here, and we need a three in this triple up here. I don't think. I don't know why it takes me so long to scan that, but I think it's true to say that there is no three. Let me just highlight. If, if all of those cells are three, you can't put three in the middle box anymore, can you? It feels like, I, I don't know why, it, it feels slightly weird. I think it's because that cell is only stopped from being a three by the fact I've got an eight, nine pencil mark in it. That, that is, that's far from, it, it doesn't immediately jump out at me, but it is true. So that means that there is a two on this arrow. Because we we now know that we can't be in a we can't be in a world where there was no two because it would be it would be a three four pair then, and that would add up to too many. So at least one of these is a two. Um, although the same logic applies, if we do, if if this was double two, we get exactly the same problem that we get with three. I have now learned this. <laughs> I learned this because if, if if this is double two, the two in this quintuple is there, and the two in this triple is there, and I've got exactly the same problem, which is that the two in the middle box has to go in that square where it can't go. Right, so there is exactly one two in here, which means that's not four. This is either two three or two four, adding up to five or six, but but if we if we remember the factors that we're we're, we're left to get. We have to deal with the seven, the factors of seven. We have to deal with the factors of eight, which are two, two, two. So we could allocate this two that we know is in one of those to that, but I don't want to do that. We could alloc we can't allocate it to nine. The factors of nine are three and three, but the ten was two and five, wasn't it? That's where I want to allocate this two. <laughs> so now the only factors I'm looking for are seven, eight, nine, and five, basically, because the 10 has been reduced. Um, so, I, okay, so I still have one five and one seven that I haven't found that have to occupy these four squares. And the five, so the, the, so the extra five is now only one of three places. Uh, that seven's annoying. I thought it might help with, with where we have to allocate the seven, but it's not. If that was seven, this would have to be a two. Is that fine? Uh, I don't know. If that's a two, that's a two. There would be no two on here. So this would be one, one, three, four. Uh, one, one, three, four, adding up to nine. And this would be two, five, one. And this would add up to eight. So that looks quite profitable. It looks quite likely almost. Um, that can't, if that's a two, this is at least a three, but I don't think that's putting very much pressure on the thermometer. If that's a one, that's a two on the white dot. So this would be at least an eight then, one, three, four, if there's a one in the corner. Wow. Um, golly gosh, I don't know what to do. Um, Right, okay, I know what to do. I think I ought to be able to prove that this isn't a high digit, actually, by the polarity of the whisper. Because if that's high... So we talked about one secret of the whisper, which is that you can't put five on it. And that means every digit along the whisper is either lower than five of its nature or higher than five of its nature. But the crucial thing to realize is whatever this is, let's say it is higher than five. Well, can't type at all. Um, if this is higher than five, um, 
could this also be higher than 5? No, is the answer. There's simply no way that these two digits can be made 5 at least apart. Even if we pick 6 and we pick 9, they're only 3 apart. So the only way you can do it is to oscillate to polarity as you, go, as you go along the line. So if this is high, this is low, and this is then high, and this is low, and this is high. So what that means is that these three digits on this W pentomino are all of the same polarity. And these two digits are all of, are both of the same polarity. So I'm thinking if this is high, these two are high, but they are in the Fistemafel ring, and they are then at least equal to six. So we'd have, am I gonna, is that fine actually? <laughs> it might, it might be fine. I was thinking that if, if these, if this is high, both of these are high, that's high. That one we don't know about, that might be high. But we've got at least three high digits to put in the ring. And by, by high, I mean at least six. And so far I've put none in. Um, Yeah, this ah, oh, this is very close to being broken, actually. Okay, because these three are all not five, and they all have to live in the ring somewhere. But we know that the gaps in the ring include a five that we haven't put in yet, because there are two fives, remember? And we've put one in, and there needs to be another one. So one of these gaps is a five, so it cannot be a high digit. So if this is high, one of these is a five. Let's say it's that one. So I've got two left. Ah, ah, bobbins, that could be that one. Oh, that's rotten. That's probably right. Okay, so, so what I'm seeing is that these three high digits, there is just enough space for them in the, in the Fistemafel ring. One of these is a five, so that leaves only three spa spaces for these three high digits. Obviously, this digit, though, can't be the same as those two by Sudoku, but it could be the same as that one, couldn't it? So these two would live in two of these three along with five, and um, something has to be a seven here. But anything could be a seven. Botheration. My phone is doing doing its buzzing thing. WhatsApp. Oh, good. Okay, that's good. Um, let's try it the other way then. Maybe we can prove. I don't think we can prove this can't be low. Or ah ah, that's beautiful. Right, I've got something here. If that's low. That's high. And that matters. And that matters. Because, uh, so, so let's just say this is low now. This is high and this is high. That means I've got two high digits to put in the ring. And by high, I mean digits that are higher than five explicitly. Well, we know one of these is a five. So the other two are going to be these digits. And why does that matter? Well, it, what, the reason I think it matters is it doesn't actually matter if this is high or low. The point is that our total panoply of high digits, it, we are quarate on high digits. We get them either from this square and this square, or we get them from this square and these two squares. There is no way you can put more high digits into the ring. And that means that everything else that is not one of those four squares in, in green is one, two, three, four, or five. Could be five. Hopefully that's clear. Uh, um, so just to run through that again, if this is low, by polarity of the line, that's high. I know that's high as well. Neither of these digits is five. Where are we putting them in the ring? This is a low digit in this scenario. So we need two digits that are higher than five. And I can put them in two of those three squares. But the other one we know needs to be a five because there needs to be a second five in the ring. And on the other hand, if this is high, then these two are high and these have to find a place in two of these three squares. 
but one of these squares is also a 5 again. So there's no way we could have a 5, or sorry, a high digit here, because there's no space for it in the ring anymore. And that means this, this is probably the key cell, isn't it? Although that... Right. Okay, that this is definitely in, this is important because um, in both boxes one and seven, I'm going to get a quintuple. By which I mean, I now know these squares are low. I know these squares are low, and in each case, look, if I combine it with the corner of the Fistimafel ring, I get a one, two, three, four, five quintuple. So these are six, seven, eight, or nine. These are six, seven, eight, or nine. These are six, seven, eight, or nine. Now, presumably, what we're meant to do is to label these up. So we'll label those as orange, which means these are both orange. So these are red, and these are both red. Now, look at this. Those are now red. Oh, that digit is therefore an orange. Oh, that's orange. Okay. I thought this was going to sort of, we were going to be able to sort of domino the grid. There's one orange in here. It's very difficult to put orange on on, on the arrow. The only way you can put an orange digit on an arrow if this is, is if this is a nine. And this, is, this arrow would go six and then a one, two pair here. Which would require this to be a three. No, I don't know whether that's impossible or not. Oh, bother. Um, this digit can't be one or two because we're summing these. Well, these can't include five by the, it's the corollary of that. So five in this box now is in one of those two squares. Ah, uh, this square is a 4 or a 5 by, by just the gap in column 3 because we've got a 6, 7, 8, 9 quadruple and a 1, 2, 3 triple. We know this digit is low and that's not 5 now by Sudoku because there's a 5 looking at it from over there. I know I know these digits are all low as well, don't I? These digits are all low. And that means that Oh sorry, I can't see what that means. I mean obviously these are consecutive. I don't know what that's meant to mean. Um, oh, sorry, I'm not sure. Um, what could we do then? We could... <laughs> I've nearly finished the Vistamafel ring and I still haven't got a clue how to actually... Ah, hang on. That can't be seven. Can that be seven? I don't know is the answer. These squares definitely include one, two and three. One of those digits only is down here. That was three. Ah, that can't be three. Because if this is three, this is a one, two pair. And now this square can't exist, can it? So that's not three. So this is four or five. Okay, right. So there's no... Um, this, again, if this was five, that has, in theory, two ways of making it s its total. It could be a two, three pair. Well, it can't be because that's going to break that square. Or a one, four pair. So in fact, now what we've just learned is there is a one on this arrow because it's either a one three pair or a one four pair. It never has a two on it, weirdly. 
So, um, it doesn't. Does it tell us where the two is? Oh, and it doesn't quite. Pin it doesn't quite tell us where one is in. Um, in this box, it almost does. If we knew this was the one, then we'd have the parity of the line, and that's going to be massive. But that could still be the one, perhaps. If that's... Oh. Oh, look. If that's the one, then you're going to get a one-two pair on the domino up here, because the, the one will be on the domino and need to be consecutive. No, this is tricky. It really isn't easy. Um, what should we look at now? How do I not know what the polarity of this whisper is still? Have I got, I mean, am I missing something very fundamental? Do I know the order of this eight, nine pair or something? My phone is going crazy. Um, I know one of these is a two, so these, well, that could never be double two. I've got nothing, I don't know. Okay, um, I'm going to have to think much harder, I fear. It's not something to do with where five goes in box nine, is it? I don't think so. Um, Do I, if this is low, do I know these are high digits? Is that is that the point? Perhaps that's the point. It's sort of independent. Yeah, maybe I can prove that's a five. That might be a good thought. Right, let's, let's think about that. So if this square is high, then these two are high, definitely. That's high, definitely. And I need three high digits on the ring that are all... So they have to go into those three squares. That's definitely true. One of them would have to be a seven. That's also definitely true. And there's the only place five could go, the second five could go in the ring, would be here. So that's option one. Now... The other option is that this is a low digit. Now, it would then be two, three, or four, which means these two are definitely low, but this is now high, this is now high. And I've only got, yes, I've only got two spaces left in the ring. Right, that's it. That's the key thing. So still, I don't know this line's polarity still, but I do now know these are both high digits. And therefore, and oh, do I know one of them's a seven or can that be a seven? Don't know. <laughs> Might be still possible for that to be a seven. But I do know that the second five on the ring now has only one possible location, which is there. So that's five. That's four. There's no four in this top thingy. Um, OK, well, that means I can knock seven out of it because seven would require a one, two, four arrow. In fact, there, there is now one on this arrow because otherwise it adds up to too many. It's two, three, five, which adds up to ten. So there's definitely a one in here. Ah. Ah. Well, now this can't be a two because that would that would make this a one, two, four arrow adding up to seven. So that's now a three. This could be it now. We could be back in business. OK, so this arrow is. Two. Yeah, so this is now eight. This is nine. There is a two, right, this is interesting. So there's a sort of X-wing of twos in these places. Right. Okay, two things, <laughs> two things for the price of one. Okay, this square and this square are now interesting to me because now this can't be seven anymore. Because if it's seven, 
seven only can only go next to two digits on a on a German whisper. And those digits are one, which we know is in one of these squares, so it can't go here, or two, which is ruled out by the X wing. We, if we were to put a two here, we would definitely would have to put a two here around this this cell and a two here, and there would be two twos in column six, and that's jolly that's too bad. We can't do that. But also knocking two out of the tip of this arrow is interesting, isn't it? Because that cell can't be a one either. So that's now at least a three. So it's three, four, five, or six. It could still be six, I think, with this one, two pair that we were thinking about earlier. One of these is now a seven, definitely. I don't really have a good way of pencil marking that, but one of those is a seven. We've dealt, we've now dealt, because we've got the five in here, we've now dealt with completely the factors of 10 that we were trying to find. So we've still got to find the factors of seven, which we know is in one of these, eight and nine. But to do that, we've still got sort of four spare cells to do it. And one of these is a high digit that's not seven. And that could be a high digit that's not seven. So we could be going s straight over the top here. And that's fine. I mean, it's fine if we get, if, if this multiplies to a, a multiple of 10 factorial, that's obviously fine. It's just, we've just got to make sure this is divisible by 10 factorial. Ah, uh, no. That's an orange digit. That's probably worth notating, isn't it? Because it can't be a red digit, but it is, it's high enough that it must be either red or orange. So there's one orange over here. Hmm. So if this is low, what are we then saying? Are we saying anything? Well, if this is low, we know it's not two and it's not one. So if this is low, this is three or four. Whatever it is can't then appear around this arrow, can it? So because a three or a four here knocks that digit out of both of those arrow tips. So whatever this is, well, okay, so that is a two, three, four triple then. Well, that's if this is low though, which it doesn't need to be. Hmm. These two would both be high. If that's three or four, this would be eight or nine by whisper logic. I don't know, that might be fine. Wow, I don't know what to do. Um, okay, I'm going to resort to things like noting this can't be a six anymore. Because if this is six, the three, this will be a one, two, three, triple, the three of which must be here. This would have to be a one, two pair. And there is no way to make this white dot work in that instance, is there? Because wh whether you put one or two here, this digit is unavailable because the one, two and the three have been hypothecated towards the arrow. So that's definitely at least a seven. Now, if it's seven, this would be four. This would be, a, ah, that would allow this to be a three bother bother <laughs> okay that didn't work um, that did not work so so if this is high these two are both high these two are the same as those two, one of which is a seven. Uh, 
7 here wouldn't work because that would have to be a 1-2 pair. So 7 would go in the corner. And it would be next to a 2. Oh, and that's fine. 7, 2. This would be 8 or 9. This would be 8 or 9. Because it couldn't be 6 because that can't be 1. So it'd be an 8, 9 pair. Maybe it's Sudoku. That's, I mean, that's most likely the thing I'm missing, isn't it? There's a three in one of these squares. Wow, I don't know, actually. I'm not at all sure what I'm missing here. I've just come to an abrupt halt. <laughs> um, could we argue something about... Oh, I've nearly got a sort of quintuple going on in row in row two. It depends what this is. If this is anything apart from six, I do have a quintuple. Is there some benefit to be noted from from noting that I can't have one, two, I can't have two and five in those squares? Is that going to allow me to do anything clever? Well, it might do, but I don't know. I don't know what that thing is. I suppose that square can't be an eight. <laughs> what that's worth. Um, this thermometer is not doing anything, is it? I mean, the bulb, I think, can still be a two. So I'm not sure that it is. Um... Wow, I don't know what to do. I, th I think I think there's probably a way I'm meant to know what the um, the polarity of this line is, but I can't see how to do it. Um, I, I've seen I've seen that if this is low, I've got a triple. And that's not putting. The only other thought I might sh I should probably just think about is I've got to make sure that those are so two, three, and four. I'm trying to remember which factors I have left. I think from memory, yeah, okay. We had, we know one of these is a two. So yeah, the combat, these digits here combined with the two on this arrow eliminated Two, all the factors of 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 10. So we need 7, 8, and 9 to be dealt with. We know 7 is dealt with by one of these. Um, the 2, 3, 4 here. Oh, well, no, that's only 3 and 4 I've not used, actually. So the 3 and 4... What's that going to mean? I almost need a pen and paper to sort of note this down. Actually, it's quite complicated. So I've got what I've got to deal with. Let's put it in up here in small. I've got I've got to deal with seven, I've got to deal with eight and nine. So this is the overall thing I have to deal with. And I would have a three and I would have a double two. So then I need I need I still need a 2 and a 3 from these digits. So I couldn't use 8. And I couldn't use... So I'd have to use 6. That's crazy. Is that right? That's absolutely crazy if that's right. I'm going to, sorry, and I realise I'm sort of probably about to repeat myself, but I'm going to do that again because I don't trust it. Um, and it's it's a pretty fundamental deduction because if, if we're, we are saying that if this is low, these are definitely a 6-7 pair.
well then I can disprove the word. I, that, that's absolutely huge if I can do that because I can see how that's going to break this column. Ooh, this is busy. this is huge, right? So I need to really concentrate. So let's go through it. I do know, and I'm very confident that these squares deal with all of the low numbers: two, three, four, five, and six. And that, when when I increase the include the two on that arrow, I also deal with ten because I've got two fives now. So 5 times 2 is dealing with 10. So I've got to deal with 7, 8, 9. One of these is a 7. So I've now got to deal with 8 and 9. Now 8 is 2, 2, 2. 9 is 3, 3. And I've got a 3, 4 in this quadruple. So that deals with 1, 3 and 2, 2s. So I need a number. The number that is not 7 in these two has to have a 2 and a 3 as its prime factors. An eight only has twos, a nine only has threes, so six is necessary. So this is so if this is low, this is a six seven pair. But if this is a six seven pair and this is low, this is the six seven pair that we're looking for, because that's where those numbers go in the Fistemafel ring. But if that's a seven, which it would have to be in this paradigm, and that's a six, because it's the high digit on the whisper that goes in the two by twos, that cannot be a six, because six on a whisper there is going to cause double one. Good grief. So this is not low, this is high, which means it's it's not six, it's seven, eight or nine. It's not six because we can't put one underneath it by whisper logic. But now this is not one because these are all of the same polarity. So we get the one in this box after a long time of thinking. I knock one off this. So this is the one in box three which means that's a one in box in box thingy thing up here this oh it can be it can be all still, still can be six eight or nine that's weird is that really true hmm apparently it is how annoying <laughs> um, okay there's a one here by sudoku how many ones have i got in the grid most of them all of them. All of them. We've done all the ones. Okay, well that's good. Uh, we know these are high, don't we? But we now we now know much less about their actual... Well, actually, we know they're 7, 8, 9, triple. That is true, because we can't put 6 on this whisper, because 1 is not available. So this is 7, 8, 9. Ah, much more important. That's orange, look. By, by the power of row 7. So that's orange... And that digit is the same as that digit, isn't it? Because we know that orange and red are uh, sort of definitionally different from this box originally. So these two digits are now the same digit. Right, okay, well there's, there's a little bit of, we can, of extra information we can glean from that. This square is not seven, because seven would make this a two. And we've already got our two twos in columns six and seven from these arrangements. So that's not able to be seven because we can't put one or two beneath it by whisper logic. That's eight or nine. So that's eight or nine. And now, what's that done? It's not done very much actually. That's really not done very much, has it? That's a bit a bit disturbing. Okay, this digit is three or four because it's not one or two and it has to be on the whisper. It can't be four because if it's four, we have to, four is monogamous on whisper lines. It has to be surrounded by nine on both sides. Right, that's three. So this is now not the, so the seven is going in the corner. 3 and 7 are too close together, they're only 4 apart. So the 7 goes in the corner, next to a 2. This is not 7. This is not 3. Oh no. <laughs> Come on. You've got to be kidding. What's That's not 3. This isn't 7.
Oh, I'm so sorry if you can see how to do this now. Well done. This, I mean, this is a magnificent puzzle, but it's not, I don't think this is easy at all. I can totally understand why the testers liked it, though. It's, it's very clever. Um, right. I don't really know what to do <laughs> again. That, oh, that's not three. Right. Okay, here is a point then. Yeah, this digit has to be quite low now because this is quite a high digit. Imagine this was four, then this would be at least five and we'd be adding up to 10 again. So that can't be four or five. We, we looked at the logic a bit like that somewhere over there earlier on. Um, so this is quite low and this has to be consecutive. So that's not five anymore, actually. That's the straightforward corollary of that. In fact, another point, there has to be an odd digit on here. And that's going to have to now be three. Which means three is in one of those cells by Sudoku. And. Okay. Surely that does something. Oh, no, this is ridiculous. How can that not do anything? I mean, in this box, it is true to say that five is in one of those three squares. I might as well notate that. That means in this box, five is in one of these two squares. Uh, in fact, okay, here, ah, uh, is this a four, five pair? Yes. Yeah. Um, if we look at, I've got all four high digits in this row already. So these digits have to, and they don't include one. So these are from two, three, four, and five. There's two, three here. So this is a four, five pair. And that's going to give me this digit. That's a six from nowhere. So that's not a six. That's not a six. That's not a six. Now I've got a two, four, five triple in this column. Oh, that's broken. No, has that broken everything? No, that's okay, isn't it? Because I've still got one more high digit to put in this column. That's got to go here. So that's not five. That's high. It's not six by this. So there's a seven, eight, nine here. And that is the second orange digit in here. So there's two orange digits here. This two, three needs to come out. That was my factors. Um... Okay, so what does that mean? Does that mean anything good? Yes, it means one thing that's good, which is that this digit is not a six because neither of my orange digits is able to be six anymore. So six is definitely a red digit, which means six is a red digit there, which means six is not an orange digit. Six is not an orange digit here. So this now has to have five on it, look, because one, two and three would add up to six. So that's not five. This is a two or as a two, three pair in the row. This five is seeing that square. So that's become a four. That's become a two. That's become a two. That's become a five. Four gets knocked off here. So this is a two, three pair now. Yes, that's fine. That's absolutely fine. I didn't say it. I didn't say her name. But look, this can't be. This is going to give me a three in the corner. <laughs> be quiet. Um, this, this, if this was two, this would add up to seven, which it can't do. I can't remember why we worked out that couldn't be a seven, but it definitely can't be. Was it something to do with that digit? It, I think it was way back, way back a long time ago. So that's that's three in the corner. That's three in the spotlight, losing its religion. And I think, did I, I think I might have put a three in there earlier and not deserved a three in the corner, but now I de get a real three in the corner that I do deserve. So this is one, three, five, that adds up to nine. So one of these is a nine now. Um, 
and in fact well that one's adding up to oh I see that's adding up to eight so that's nine so that's eight so now so now orange wherever it occurs is an eight nine pair which means that's nine that's eight that's nine and finally I thought this is six now by Sudoku so that's six that's seven and I'm a little bit more confident that we might get to the end of the puzzle now that's probably famous last words let's hope not um Okay, so we've got a lot of stuff going on all of a sudden. Um, I've got a four looking at that digit. Yes, okay. So this is a three, isn't it? It can't be double two, so this is five. Uh, by maths. <laughs> um, then we can say that's a two, that's a three. That's a three by Sudoku. These squares are two, four, and six. Well, that's very odd. That, that seems to have, they seem to have no digits looking at them. Um, this is a seven. Oh, so that's that's the seven. Look, I didn't say it again. I said that's a seven. It's ridiculous. I'm, I'm definitely going to turn her off. I'm going to turn you off now. You've interrupted one too many videos and this one twice, which I think is the first time I've ever been interrupted twice by the creature. Um, this is, uh, that's another three in the corner, I think. <laughs> that's three in the corner. That's three in the spotlight, losing its religion. That's great. I got two threes in the corner. That's nine, that's eight by Sudoku using this creature over here. Eight can't go there. Oh, we still don't get the eight. It's in one of those two positions in the bottom row. Four, five, and eight. This is a four or a five. Then we might. This is this is what we might have to use now. That's four or eight. That's four, five, or eight. I think. So this digit is at least equal to. F it's not five. It's at least equal to six. Um. So that digit's at least equal to seven. But it can't be equal to 8 because there's an 8 here. So that is 7. That is 6. That is not 6. That digit is 2 by the power. The power of Doku coming to our rescue. That is now not 4. We've chocolate teapotted the bottom row. Ah! Oh, bobbins, we really have, I think. But we've, we've done everything. It should just be Sudoku now. I think we've used all the constraints. So, okay, so four, six, eight. So that's six or eight. That's four or six. That's not going to help, is it? Let's try this column. Um, four, five, seven. That's a naked single seven. That doesn't help us. So this is four or five. Oh, the seven, I see. So the seven does that. That's a six. That's an eight. So that's a four. That's a five. That's an eight. That's a six. And the top of this column is five and nine, which we can... Oh, I see. Five, nine, four get filled in. And I don't see how that's resolved. Not sure how this is resolved. Maybe it's row... Six then. Four, six, eight, nine. So that's four or six. And that one is six or nine. Still not quite done, is it? Um, two, three, four, six, seven. Oh, okay. Right, there's a naked single sitting here, I think. So by the row, we need two, threes, four, sixes, and sevens. And that seems to only be able to be four. That gives me a six here and a four and a five here. Okay, so does that help us? Yes, it gives me five in this box. So the did, oh, which means that's a three by Sudoku. That's a four, that's a six. Okay, so these squares are 8 and 9, which well, we don't know the order of, apparently. But now in this row, I still need 2 and 2. I can put 2 in, and I need 7. So that gives me the 7 and the 6. 
Uh, and now in this row, the only place for a 6 is here, which means that's the 8, that's the 8, that's the 9, that's a 9, and that's a something 4, I want to say. What a puzzle that is. That is absolutely brilliant. Not easy at all. Thank goodness for that. Solve counter 1. <laughs> the testers must have created this for me. Do I like it? I most certainly do. That was absolutely brilliant. Good grief. Wow, B Frange 17, take a bow. Is that your first puzzle? It can't be your first puzzle. And let's, I think what we should do actually, just to be diligent and make absolutely sure, is I just want to check that this ring is, the product of this ring is a multiple of 10 factorial. So let's do it slowly. We'll, we'll deal with 10 first. So 10 is two and five, isn't it? That's done. Nine is double three. Oh no, hang on, I'm gonna do nine, just using the simple nine. I'm gonna do eight using the simple eight. I'm gonna do seven using the simple seven. So now we're on to six, and we don't have a six in the ring, so let's do two and three. Now we're doing five, so we'll do that. Now we're doing four, which we've just got. Now we're doing three, which we've just got. Now we're doing two, which we've just got. So I think this is three times 10 factorial. <laughs> I don't know if that's right. I'll, I'll rely on the comments from erudite mathematicians to tell me if that's correct. But we, we basically used the elements of numbers to crack this. Um, but it wasn't it wasn't easy, at least not for me. I mean, goodness only knows what I missed throughout that solve. But what a fascinating puzzle. Another quite long video. Um, but I hope you don't mind. I mean, we, we, we try to find the very best puzzles in the world. And no no one will convince me that that's not one of them. Brilliant. Loved it. Let me know in the comments how you got on. I enjoy the comments, especially when they're kind. And hopefully see you shortly for a Hexcel stream. Bye for now.